I'm seeing some great help that is now in season. Something is happening, almost, I would say, dramatically happening that I've never seen before. And uh, I think it's because the ecclesia is no longer conceptual. That is, we took years to teach what it is, how it operates, what the king says about it, because people did not know. But it's moved now from a concept to a function. And that is sparking things in the spirit realm. That's enabling things to be activated that have never been activated at this level before. And uh, today, I'm going to try to explain some of that to you. I'll start in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high, lifted up. The train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two, he covered his face. And with two, he covered his feet. And with two, he flew. One cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the posts of the door were, were shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. So I said, Woe is me, for I'm undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken from, from the tongs, or with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth with it, and he said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away. Your sin is purged. I also heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am I. Send me. I want to talk to you about another dream the Lord has given to me. I've had several dreams the last few months, and that's very unusual for me. I would think in 43 years or so, I've had 10 significant dreams given to me by the Lord. But in the last few months, there has been a series of dreams that speak into our times. They help prepare the ecclesia for, uh, that's the true church, for our times right now. Today's going to be uh, very unusual. I don't know how long I'm going to talk. Uh, it may be short. It may be long. If it's short, nobody cares. <laughs> I, I may jump around a little bit because sometimes I wrestle with how to share spiritual things and how much to share. It's, it's difficult to describe spiritual things sometimes. The Apostle Paul said, the natural mind can't receive spirit things. He even said, it's foolishness to them. To some, this may appear foolish. I'm sure to Pharisees it will. But I've been praying over this for four days now. We must understand the spirit realm is a real realm. It's not imaginary. It's very real. In fact, both the Greeks and the Hebrews consider the spirit realm to be more real than the natural realm because it's eternal. And uh, it, is, it is something that is tangibly real, though it's in the spirit realm. There are things that happen in the spirit realm that affect things on the earth. Things the Godhead does or things they say. Decisions they make will affect things on the earth. Also, things they have angels do or say 
can affect things on the earth. Angels are also very real beings. In fact, the Lord of hosts, as it said in Isaiah 6 here, the Lord of hosts, or Lord Sabaoth, the Lord of angel armies, occurs 261 times. So evidently, the king wants us to know he has an army, and it's a good one, and he's Lord of it. 261 times is not an accident. Angels are real messengers for the Godhead. And a part of my apostolic calling has been the last 15 years or so to define how angels partner with us, giving that understanding. What happens in the spirit realm, prophecies that come from the spirit realm through Holy Spirit, when obeyed or when decreed and acted upon, can and does affect things on the earth. I believe that something like that is now happening. There are some things that are going to affect things on the earth because of a functioning ecclesia, a functioning remnant, and because of functioning apostles and prophets. Because of this, there are things can now occur that couldn't occur before. It is Holy Spirit supervised. He's always boss. Just keep that in mind. He's always boss. And it will help us, it will help the king's ecclesia gain the advantage. Remember, Holy Spirit, Jesus said, is always going to work to give you the advantage. He's doing that right now. We need help to get some things done. We need supernatural help. He's working to give us that advantage right now. I've been pondering a prophetic word that I gave a couple of months ago, and it's one of those words that just occupy your spirit. Uh, sometimes a word it just settle in me and I, it, you can't get away from it. It's always kind of there. Holy Spirit said this, now begins the merger of Christ's spiritual kingdom in the earth realm with the kingdom of heaven in the spirit realm in ways and levels never seen before. The merger will accelerate a new era of Pentecost. Power and kingdom authority will be seen on the earth as has never been seen before. Glory presence will fill prepared territories, prepared regions, and prepared nations. Um, I believe the prepared that's being talked about there are places where the ecclesia is now functioning. With surge after surge of the king's manifest presence, miracles will suddenly be spawned in the territories, the prepared territories and regions and nations. The enemies of our kingdom will be disoriented. That is now happening, but it's going to accelerate. And they will fight each other. That is also happening, but it will now accelerate. In fact, I'm seeing there's going to be a massive betrayal somehow. Uh, I'm not sure what that is, but I feel it. Resulting in freedoms decreed by the king's ecclesia and assisted by my angel armies. For I will now surely release my mighty ones to labor with you. My mighty angels are moving into the earth realm as I commission them to. I've been pondering what is this merger? 
What is the merger of angel armies with the saints' army in the earth realm about? What is the releasing of the mighty angels to labor with us? What is that about? The, 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 the high-ranking authority angels, angels of high rank being released as commissioned by the Holy Spirit to, to assist us. What, what is that merger? What is that merger about? Now, this is actually a quest that I've been on for 15 years. Most of you are here today. We're not here for that journey. Most of you online, we're not here for that journey. Only a few were here for, for, uh, for all of that. And I'm going to have to bring us up to date on some things as Holy Spirit leads. But, but for several years, Holy Spirit began to teach us. I taught it, I think, six times. I just <clears throat> couldn't seem to get it right. But, but he taught us what angels do. He taught us their intrinsic nature. What is the personality profile of angels? Because we got we to know that if, if, if we're going to partner with them. How do we partner with them? And then five or six years ago, he began to show me entire divisions of angels, uh, angel armies, with millions in each division that he was now sending to assist, breakthrough angels, evangelism angels, um, angels of revival, special angels, uh, special agent angels. Um, and uh, I just begin to see them. In fact, I wrote another book after the first angel book about, about that. And now he's showing me another division of angels that he is bringing to assist. So Angels and their ministry is not new to this apostolic hub. It is not revelation that I sought. Um, I was talking to the Lord about something totally different when he began to talk to me about angels. It was like, I don't want to talk about what you want to talk about. And it is an assignment I know Holy Spirit has given me and I must steward that. Holy Spirit said, I'm moving my mighty, high-ranking, authority angels into the earth realm in functioning new ways. Now, this year, I have seen more angels or more angel activity than all of the other years put together. So I've known something big is up. Something's coming Together And since the 54 days of shaking and change that Holy Spirit led us through, I have seen the greatest amount of purple sash angels and the blue sash angels that I've ever seen. These divisions of angels have been here off and on for 15 years. But this year, there's not been one service that they're not here. Now, I don't talk about this a great deal because people are more comfortable if I talk about demons than angels. They, they, send, they tend to see demons everywhere. I see angels, okay? But I've got to talk about this a bit more now uh, as Holy Spirit leads. I believe they are here to help us, to help assist a super Pentecost and assist us in a war season that we're going to win. Now, let me, let me explain this a bit. Fifteen years ago, Holy Spirit began to teach me about angels. And one day, I'll, maybe even next week, I'll talk more detail about those times. But about a month into that, up in the balcony, right up here, I saw two very big angels 15 years ago. I just got up to preach. I look up and there they, they were. And I somehow knew that they were leaders of other angels, like generals. I intuitively knew that of the Holy Spirit. One 
of the angels had a blue sash on and the other had a purple sash on. It's one of the ways Holy Spirit identifies angels to me. I, I uh, refer to it as the uniform uh, that is worn by our military. You can tell they're in the Navy, they're in the Army, they're Marines by their uniforms. And I begin to see different colors with these angels. But I had never seen colors before until then. And again, I was right over here, stepped up to preach, and there they were. I couldn't wait to get out of the service to go study colors because I'd not, I didn't, I had never done that. Purple is the color of government authority, high authority leaders, government. They wear purple and they wear fine linen. Blue is the color of awakening, reformation, or revivals, or other moves of the Holy Spirit. These two angels have been here off and on for 15 years. But this year, there's not been one service that they are not there. Now, for the past few weeks here in our services... I have felt the presence of another very powerful angel along with these two angels, though I did not, I did not see him. I often discern angels and I know that they are there, but I don't always see them. In fact, I would say most times Holy Spirit helps me know it and I don't know how to describe that. I just know it. It's, it's a grace gift that, that helps my apostolic calling. I, I know, I know what they're doing. I know who they are. But this angel was the most powerful angel that I've ever experienced, <clears throat> and certainly here. I could, I could feel it when, when he came in. Um, is like the presence um, of a, <coughs> excuse me, of a person of authority that you can, you can tell. They carry authority, they carry weight. <clears throat> and I could feel that. Now, please, and this is important to understand, um, not a divine presence. This was not a divine presence. Angels are not divine. God's divine, the Godhead's divine. Angels are not divine, but angels are supernatural beings and they carry the weight of God's glory in his presence. <clears throat> well, all I knew was to do was to pray into this, which I began to do. And I mean, obviously there was a reason. Obviously, <clears throat> assistance was available that, that I... I was seeing, I was starting to understand. Now, briefly, hang in there. I'm going to put this together. Let me give you some more explanation. The Godhead is often described as releasing their ministry through angels. I've been asked many times, why does he do that? I don't know. He's God. He does what he wants to, and he's decided <clears throat> that he will release a lot of his ministry through angels. So most certainly, if they, if they, the Godhead, releases ministry through angels, it should not be surprising to the heirs, the born-again ones, that we also would need angels to partner with us and assist us in the ministry that we are doing on the earth. Quite frankly, New Testament ministry is not possible without angels assisting us. There are certain things that we've got to do that require <clears throat> angelic assistance. God didn't make angels to see if he could do it. They are needed beings. Hebrews 1 and verse 14 says they are ministering spirits sent to minister to or for with the heirs of salvation. Now, Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7 makes this statement. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels spirits 
and his ministers a flame of fire. That's a quote from Psalms 104, verse 4. Flaming is the Greek word plox, and it, it, it refers to a, <clears throat> a flash of fire or a blaze of fire or a tongue of fire. That's what was seen on the day of Pentecost. Tongues of fire hovered over the 120. In other words, angels were assisting Holy Spirit to connect a Pentecost to earth. Plox also is a word that describes a lightning bolt. Angels are carriers of God's glory. Glory fire is on them and angels can strike like lightning from Holy Spirit's presence for the heirs. They can strike like, like lightning from Holy Spirit's presence to assist the king's ecclesias. It's both. It can strike like lightning for you. You're a born again one, an heir. They can strike like lightning for you. Or they strike for the ecclesia's ruling, reigning decrees. They can strike. Striking, of course, <clears throat> speaks of suddenlies. We are entering into a supernatural season of great suddenlies. The striking power of our kingdom, I believe, is now going to increase. We are moving into a very incredible season of time right now. Now, just a bit more definition than, than the dream. Ezekiel chapter 1 and verse 13 describes angels or ministering spirits, living beings this way. As for the likeness of the living creatures or angels, their appearance was like burning coals of fire. And like the appearance of lamps, it went up and down among the living creatures. And the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. Notice the angels appeared as flashes of light. I often see them that way. Or cloven tongues of fire, plocks. Plocks, blazes of fire or flashes of fire. They were fiery. The living beings, it says, looked like bright coals of fire, and brilliant torches. And the lightning seemed to flash back and forth among them. The Message Bible reads this way. The angels looked like a blazing fire or like fiery torches. Tongues of fire shot back and forth between the creatures and out of the fire, bolts of lightning, plocks, bolts of lightning, plocks, tongues of fire shot back and forth. In Isaiah chapter 6 and verse 6 that I read to you as we began, Isaiah said this, a seraphim flew to me with burning coals he had taken from the altar with a pair of tongs, and he touched my lips. In other words, he lit my lips to prophesy. That's what Isaiah was. He was, he was a, prophet, a prophet, and he was accepting a call. When he accepted that call, the angel took a coal, touched his lips. He burned iniquity off of his speech so he could speak as a true witness for God. Noted Hebrew theologian Spiro Zodiades describes a seraphim as a winged angel that appears as glowing flames of fire. They are fire angels with authority to strike with God's power. They are authority angels with the ability, the authority to strike like lightning. Let me tell you a dream that I had back in, in July and put this all together. I have told no one this dream and except for Carol, I did tell her the general details when it happened, but I didn't go into it uh, in all the details. It just seemed like something so far out there. 
And in fact, I tried to shelf this one because of what people may think. I even said to the Holy Spirit who kept prompting me about this, I'm not sure what people are going to think about this one, Lord. And uh, I don't mind telling you, he rebuked me. I have to repent sometimes just like all of you. He said, when did I ever tell you to say something because of what people think? I said, never. In fact, you've, you've told me to say things regardless of what they think. Anyway, I felt pressed to do this today. In this dream, a mighty angel flew to me carrying two things. He flew to me. That was so significant after 15 years of this. I've had angels appear to me. I've had angels walk up to me and tell me things, but I have never had an angel fly to me, ever. It's never happened. And somehow in this dream, I knew this was like the angel that flew to Isaiah or the angels Ezekiel was seeing. That's why I read the passages in Ezekiel and, and read Isaiah as we began. In other words, I knew this is a seraphim, an angel with highest ranking authority to strike. Seraphim are considered by many theologians to be the highest order of angels or rank of angels. Michael and Gabriel are, are thought to be in that order, though they carry power delegated by the Godhead to be archangels. Their assignments give them great authority. Michael and, and Gabriel have the authority to strike if need to also. Seraphim protect and declare the holiness of God, something most of the world has defiled. They declare it so boldly that the doors of the temple shook, according to Isaiah. They assist the declaration of God's glory filling all of the earth. They assist his glory surges in the earth, the, the, the amping up of his, his presence. They protect altars. They work at altars. Remember the seraphim went to the altar. And with tongs, he takes this red glowing coal and then touched it to Isaiah's lips to cleanse his lips to speak purely. Seraphim prepare messengers to be sent. And we also, in our times, we have sent ones. We have special sent ones in our times as well. Remember, God said in the passage we started with, who will go for us? And Isaiah said, he would go. And the seraphim ministers fire then to cleanse his message. They, seraphim help prepare the heirs for assignments or prepare them for callings. And these angels carry great authority and kingdom of God power um, everywhere in the, in the heavens and the earth. Most orders of, of angels or ranks of angels are under the seraphim. So seraphim are very high-ranking angels. Well, in this dream, this seraphim flew to me. I'm not saying it's the same, <laughs> it's the same one that flew to Isaiah. I don't know that. But I do know the angels or the angel that flew to Isaiah didn't die because there are no angel graveyards. They do not die. That angel's still alive and doing something. It's still ministering. In this dream, I could see that this angel had wings that were silver. 
His appearance was striking. It was bright reddish gold color, like the colors of a hot fire. His garments were very bright white, a glistening type of white, uh, bright white. A gold belt was tied around his waist. It was very, very tall, the tallest angel that I have seen, and very muscular. You could tell that even through the white garments. And in this dream, I was absolutely awestruck. To say I was astonished would be an understatement. I, and I just stared at this awesome being wondering what's, what's taking place here. This angel handed me two things. First, he handed me a sheet of paper with writing filling, filling the whole page. But I couldn't read it because it was written upside down and backwards. And it all ran together. It was like written in code. And he said to me, when he handed the paper, he said, it's strategies for ecclesia breakthrough events. Also, he said, it's plans for awakening and worldwide revival. It's plans for the great harvest. And he said, it's secret intelligence for things to come. I said to, to him, but I can't read this. And he said, that's because you don't have these. And he handed me a very large ring of keys, bigger than you could fit in your pocket. I mean, it must have been half a foot wide. And on it were dozens of keys, gold keys, silver keys, red keys, blue keys, and some kind of grainy, emerald something kind of key. And he gave these keys to me saying, these keys will, will enable you to unlock the doors of revelation, revealing strategies, plans, and secrets proposed for your times. Then he said, they are, they are spiritual kingdom keys of the king's master keys he has promised you. They do not work by hand. They work by voice command. Use these keys with commands in his name to open or close doors. He ended by saying, the keys have been activated. Then this, this seraphim flew up, but he didn't fly away. He flew up and assumed a hovering, watchful type position. And that was the dream. I couldn't help but think of Matthew 16, 18 and 19, the words of Jesus. The Amplified Bible reads this way. On a huge rock like Gibraltar, I'll build my church in the gates of Hades. The powers of the infernal region will not overpower it or be strong to its detriment or hold out against it. I don't know how we got that one so wrong. The church has been trying to hold out against hell. King said, no, 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 no. Hell's not going to hold out against you. It's not strong enough. I'm going uh, to enable, I'm building one that's going to overpower it. Don't, start, don't think, hold out. Think, dominate. But he continues, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, keys, and whatever you bind, declare to be improper or unlawful on earth must be what is already bound in heaven. And whatever you loose, declare unlawful on the earth must be what is already loosed in heaven. The Message Bible reads this way, this is the rock on which I will put together my church a church so expansive with energy that not even the gates of hell will be able to keep it out. Out of what? Out of ruling and reigning. Out of the seven mountains of the culture. Out of anything it wants in. 
And that's not all. You will have complete and free access to God's kingdom, keys to open any and every door. No more barriers between earth and heaven or uh, earth and heaven or heaven and earth and earth and heaven. A yes on earth is yes in heaven. A no on earth is a no in heaven. Jesus said, I'm going to give my ecclesia keys. Keys to open doors, keys to close doors. And seraphims help us use those keys. They help us gain access. They help us close off access. It's phenomenal. Now, I had never seen in the 15 years or in my whole life, I've never seen a seraphim order or rank of angel, except in the dream, until two Sundays ago. I saw, again, high in the balcony, the two angels that I've seen for so many times, standing together as they always have. They're always standing together. Purple sash, blue sash, the government angel, the angels that work Holy Spirit's revivals, reformations, his movings. And I've always known they are generals. They're, they're over a lot of angels. But the blue sash angel two weeks ago moved over to this side. That the purple sash angel stayed right there. And I've never seen them do that before. They've never moved before. They just, they're there. Blue over here, purple over here, and in the middle, the angel in the dream appeared. The blue and the purple sash angels, they held then their arms out like this, like as though they were protecting us. It was like this. And the seraphim hovered, just watching everything. When that happened, I felt a shift take place in the spirit realm. Dr. Hodges was here. Some of you may remember this. And he prayed over us. But that morning, I described it as a car shifting into another gear. Uh, that's the kind of shift that, that I was feeling. It was, it was like a, a car, a, 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 the old fashioned car that it has a clutch, you know, and you gotta shift the gear and sometimes we would grind those gears to get it where it needs to be, to get it into another gear. And I felt it shift. I knew the grinding was ending and I, I felt something happen and I, I saw what I just described. I've been praying into that uh, much ever since and looking at scriptures. And again, I told no one this dream. No one has heard this dream. But the Holy Spirit did give a confirmation. I'm still, it's just blowing me away. One of my prophet friends, well-known prophet, uh, who God has used to speak into our nation many times, he sent me a text message. Now, I was not expecting this. I heard the Spirit of the Lord say that he has assigned a seraphim to your house, Oasis. You, you can't imagine the feeling that came over me. I mean, I told no one. For your house has become more than an apostolic center to the nation. It has become an altar of the Lord to the nation. Holy Spirit says to you that he has assigned this seraphim to tend the fire altar alongside of you. This is an altar of fire of the Most High for releasing revival fires, for healing the nation, 
and the fire of awakening of a nation. It is a fire of understanding and walking in the depths of the supernatural. Holy Spirit says, America has been on a timer and it is now time. One of the things Prophet Chuck said Friday night is now I must reset your time. You're on a new timer. Now is the time to partner with the seraphim to pepper the nation with the fire of your altar. Holy Spirit will show you in dreams, visions, holy unctions, when and where you will instruct the seraphim to release the fire from this new altar into the nation. This is the igniting of awakening in every pore of my nation, America. The fire from your altar will be the manifestation of the engagement of my passion for your nation. The time is now. I heard Holy Spirit say, Father created this seraphim to tend this special altar of fire with you. A different order or a different rank of authority or angel assistance is now available to assist us. Now this, his word of course is for the assignments that God has given to us here and we will steward it as best we can. I don't know all there is to know about this. I mean, I, I, I've got a lot to learn. I, I don't know, I'm not saying I know everything. I don't know everything about angels. I think people come up and they think I know everything about angels, I don't. I feel like I'm in kindergarten. But also, we represent in many of these dreams and many of these prophetic words, a corporate ecclesia in our nation and world. Please understand now what's happening. Holy Spirit's moving. He's moving in a dramatic new way. Things are changing. Powerful help is coming to assist the king's ecclesia. Yes, here, but all of his ecclesias. Keys are now being given to unlock regions. Strategies are being given to unlock regions. The Lord says to his ecclesia, a merger now begins of the king's special spiritual kingdom of the earth realm. With the kingdom of heaven and its mighty ones at levels never seen before, says the Lord, power and authority is shifting to another level. A portal is opening over the king's ecclesias into supernatural realms. Glory surges will now begin to roll through the nation. They will roll through ecclesias throughout the earth you will see the increased strikes of Holy Spirit and his angels. Yes, suddenlies are striking the enemies of my kingdom even this month, says the Lord. You will now see the rollout of a series of suddenlies plan to overpower demon thrones. Suddenlies, 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 sudden, suddenlies, says the Lord. The Lord says, align yourself, Ecclesia, with mighty authorities from the heavenly realms, my principalities, my powers, my dominions, my princes, activating in merger with you my princes, my princes have arrayed for battle. My dominions have arrayed for battle. My mighty ones have arrayed for battle. They have received their positioning assignments in the earth realm. 
for it is time for the strike of my kingdom. I will set my messengers on fire with my message. I will cleanse the lips of my prophets. I will cause the fire on my ecclesia altars to begin to blaze. And my seraphs will minister with my heirs from those altars. Blazing, purging, fires of holy cleansing will now rise as my strong ones co-labor with my ecclesia. The Lord of hosts decrees, let the breakthrough events begin. Let the plans of awakening unlock. Let the harvest plans be implemented. Let doors of victory open. Ecclesia, receive new keys for your times. Decree the, the keys with commanding voice to open gateways of promise. Let a confident heart rise in you, says the Lord. A merger has now begun. A new era of Pentecost will accelerate forward. Power and kingdom authority will be seen on the earth as never before. Glory presence will fill prepared territories, regions and nations. And now I am commissioning my mighty ones to labor with you. In new ways, my mighty angels are moving into the earth realm commissioned to you. For the intersection of time and seasons have met together. And my purposes will spawn miracles and sudden victories. The strike season begins. Hmm. I'm not going to pretend I know how all that's going to happen. I'm not going to pretend I know everything about that, but I do know what I've seen and what I've heard. We're beginning a different journey. One led by the Holy Ghost. Things are about to change. Singers and musicians, come. Let me pray into this. Mm. Mm. I'm going to ask you to stand and agree with me. I... I felt the day I was to announce to the ecclesia. Again, I am, I don't consider myself to be, I'm just trying to do what I, what I can. I don't feel I'm over anybody. I don't, not special. But I know he told me to announce a new order of hiring angels are coming to assist the ecclesias. So I do announce that in the name of Jesus. And as a kingdom apostle, I say welcome to the earth realm, those who have been commissioned for this time. Commissioned to the ecclesias, commissioned to this house. Holy Spirit, we say yes to this supernatural event. Uh, we say yes. Do whatever you want. You lead it. You guide it. We'll just be dependent ones. We are anyway. We declare a welcome to this mighty order of angelic assistance. We thank you. What an advantage you are giving. I pray God for wisdom, understanding, enlightenment to steward this. We move into journeys, Lord, often that you call us to. We don't know how. 
we just trust that you do. We welcome the seraphim, the high-ranking authorities with authority to strike, commissioned by Holy Spirit, fueled by the ecclesia and their voice commands. Doors will now unlock that have been locked. Doors will close. Teach us how to flow with the merger. We want to flow with the merger. Give wisdom to the apostles. Give wisdom to the prophets. May the seraphim touch our lips with fire. The coals of fire from the altar begin to touch your messengers. To speak the pure word of the Godhead upon this earth. No compromise. To speak it boldly, purely. Burn iniquity off of us. Train us to partner in the spirit realms. Help us see things, Lord, that are real, but we haven't been able to see them. Show it to us, Lord. Open the spirit realms to us and we would partner with you, partner with the Holy Spirit, partner with your strategies, your plans. I loose in the name of Jesus plans. I loose strategies for the worldwide event revival we we lose the strategies we unlock the doors may heaven realm and earth realm be seen walking together even as you father came down to a garden and walked in the natural realm with man. Come walk with us. Come be with us more than we've ever seen before. Holy Spirit, you who always gives us the advantage, we thank you that you're giving us an advantage in a very new way. Activate this order of angels to assist the ecclesia, its assignment and its callings. We declare in Jesus' name, welcome, let it be done according to the purpose and the plan of the Holy Spirit, our commander, in Jesus' name, hallelujah.